Hi, I'm Dr. Teresa Oswald from Knowledge is Medicine, and today I wanted to talk about something that um, is a new trend in nutrition. And you know, normally when I talk about nutrition, I'm in my kitchen whipping something up, but this is actually the opposite of that. It's called intermittent fasting. So it's about taking time um, in the day when you're not eating, and that time of day that we normally um, have where we're not eating, which is the overnight period, and just lengthening it to more of the day. Now, the reason why this may be helpful for your health, and especially in regards to pain, is there's research that shows that actual fasting, where you're not eating food for longer periods of time, like more than just 10 or 12 or 16 hours, can improve um, pain in the body for people that have rheumatoid arthritis, um, and also it can reduce inflammation. But fasting isn't without its, it, you know, its risks. There, you know, it can um, reduce your blood sugar. It, in people that have more fragile health conditions, they shouldn't be doing something that severe. But intermittent fasting is pretty safe because we all do it to some degree. So let's think about this. What time do you usually eat your last meal? So. Um, I usually eat, I'm usually done with dinner by 6 or 7 o'clock at night. I try not to have snacks in the evening. And then my next meal is usually around 6 or 7 in the morning. And that meal is called breakfast. It's breaking a fast, the fast of not eating overnight. And the reason why we, our bodies need that is that there's times where our bodies need to digest our food during the day. And then there's times where the, our bodies need to assimilate the nutrients and things that we um, digest it and actually you know, put them into parts of our body where it's necessary. So you need to have a time where you're digesting your foods and your thoughts and then you need a time when there's assimilation and that's during the fasting period, which is normally anywhere you know from eight to 12 hours for people when you don't eat overnight when you're sleeping. So intermittent fasting is just trying to lengthen that time period. So you could try to um, only eat during eight hours during the day. So that would mean like if you got up and ate breakfast at eight o'clock in the morning, then you try to eat your last meal before or at four o'clock in the evening. And that's eight hours. And that would give your body more time for assimilation. And if it follows from the research they've done on fasting for longer periods, it would give your body more of a period of reduced inflammation. Then sometimes people try to even restrict that um, amount more to only eating for six hours. But I think for most people who are fasting for 12 hours or 10 hours overnight, to reduce the, the amount of time they spend eating during the day from their first meal to their last meal to eight or 10 hours, and then just see what the health benefits are that, you, that you're feeling inside your body. Because we do have this laboratory inside us that's our body. And if fasting seems to give you more energy, more clarity, uh, improved um, ease of movement, reduced inflammation, reduced pain, then you might want to try to go to the next level in re restricting the amount of time you're eating just by another two hours. Any more than that, I think, is you know, getting into actually fasting and can have impacts on your, on your blood sugar and your energy level. So this small modifications in what you're doing already uh, is probably the best way to go and then see how you feel. Um, so if this content's interesting, please like and subscribe. I'm Dr. Teresa Oswald at Knowledge is Medicine.